And in case the winds keep on blowing in your life, my soul has been anchored in the Lord. I know sometimes in this life you're going to be tossed by the waves and currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor. And it keeps me steadfast, unmovable, despite the tide. But if the storms don't cease, and just in case the winds, they keep on blowing in my life. My soul has been anchored in the Lord. I want you to understand that your anchor will hold long as your anchor is the word of God, long as it is God himself. He will not leave you nor abandon you, won't forsake you, won't allow you to be overtaken, overwhelmed. He will not allow any weapon to form against you that is not in the name of Jesus already under his feet, under his control. Whatever you need, whoever you are, God has you. God has you. God has you. God has you. We speak life. We speak life. I don't care what you're going through. Depression has to leave in the name of Jesus. Mind battles have to leave in Jesus' name. You're not alone in this. He has all of heaven backing you. You're not alone in this. He has heaven backing you. And so whatever you need, wherever you are, God can reach you. Wherever you are, God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we bless your name. God, we extol your name. You're still worthy above anything that could ever come our way, anything that could ever try to silence our praise, anything that will try to ever come against us and make us stop. But you are the one. You are the reason for what is going on in our life because you have not left us and not you're not going to forsake us that is your promise to us and we love you in Jesus name amen thank you give God some praise where you're at Let me say something. Don't get up from that keyboard. Let me say something real quick that I want you to sing while you're at home or wherever your location is. Amen? I want you to get ready to realize what God is doing. Amen? It's a party out here. No matter what you're going through, God is still in control. That's why we can stand bold and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend. Well, he healed my body, told me to run on. Heal my body, told me to run on. Heal my body, told me to run on. He's my friend. Won't you repeat this at your house? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Come on here. Not my mama, not my daddy, not my sister, not my brother. Nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody do me like the Lord. Nobody. Do me like Jesus. Nobody do me like the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, hey! Yes, sir. 
Watch it. Did it, 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 do it. Yes, sir. Did it, 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 do it. Do it, do it. Did it, 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 do it. Did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it, do it. Hey! Did it, do it. Heal my body. Did it, do it. Save my soul. Did it, do it. Turned it around. Did it, do it. Made me whole. Do it. Do it. Come on, Jesus. Do it. Do it. Hey! Come on. Did it do it? Heal my body. Did it do it? Save my soul. Did it do it? Made me whole. Did it do it? Hey! Just hold on, we gonna make it. Just hold on, cause everything gonna be all right. <laughs> Some people like to worry, mm, yeah. Some people like just to complain. But I love to praise his holy name, cause I found out that Jesus is always the same. Hold on, change is coming. Hold on, everything, everything gonna be all right. Hold on, guess what? We gonna make it. Hold on, call everything, everything be all right. You might be sitting there concerned about this, but I know in the Bible it says that Jesus fixed it. Sometimes you're sad, sometimes you're strong. If that's the way you feel, you're not really wrong. Just hold on. Change is coming. Just hold on. I want you to know everything's going to be all right. Hold on. We going to make it. Hold on. I want you to know everything's going to be all right. Say, hold on. Hold on, hold on, you say, hold on, don't give up, don't give in, hold on, everything, everything be all right, watch it, go ahead, stand up and get your dance on wherever you at right now, come on. coming hold on you got to realize everything's gonna be all right hold on we gonna make it hold on tell your neighbor everything's gonna be all right hey give God some praise yeah it's celebration it's 
Palm Sunday. Yeah, victory. Yeah, don't get me started. Victory. Good God Almighty, I tell you, I'm excited. Amen. I thank God and give God some praise. And wherever you're located, give God some praise. We believe in praising God. You know, the history behind Evangelist Adventist Church, my lovely wife and I, Dr. Cynthia Bolden and I, and our two sons started the ministry in a hotel. And we always had 50 seats. And all 50 seats be empty, except for us. And we learned how to praise God no matter what the crowd is. Because we found out it ain't the crowd that boosts you, it's the Holy Ghost that boosts you. But we're going to go to the book of St. John. Amen. We just thank God for the musicians and for those who are the staff that has come out here. Amen. So we can try to encourage you. Good God Almighty. Amen. Oh, I tell you what, I feel something in my belly and I ain't talking about a burp. I feel that old school on me. Come on. Let's go to St. John. Amen. Because there's a battle we got going on <clears throat> on the inside constantly. But we already know we're victorious. Some people have lost their jobs and we know God has got a way to make things happen. Uh, it, it's just, I'm a true believer. <clears throat> for those who have uh, called on the name of Jesus, he's going to turn stuff around. Amen? I'm going to give you a little nugget here uh, today. I want to talk to you about something that's very important. When we look here in the Bible, we deal with the fact that it's Palm Sunday. And according to our studies in Palm Sunday is when actually Jesus came into the church. Before that, he was outside the temple. But when he came in, a party started. And the Bible says he rode in on the back of a donkey, and uh, they started throwing down palm leaves. That's what these palm leaves represent victory. If you notice how the leaves are pointed up like a, a V. So every time you look at a palm leaf, you got to realize, hey, that means uh, I'm going to have some victory today. Now, what we had to understand in this is that he was fulfilling scripture according to Zechariah 9.9. 9, when he talked, uh, when the Bible talks about rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout out, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, and he is just, having salvation, lowly, and riding up on an ass, up on a coat, the fowl of an ass. So he was prophesied in Zechariah 9, 9, that he was going to come to the children of Israel in that form, in that fashion. So we had to understand that when he walked, uh, when he rode in on the, the uh, donkey, that it really upset the Pharisees and the scribes, and uh, they got hardness of heart. Actually, they, they hated on him because of the fact he walked in and the people were hollering, Hosanna! Hosanna! I tell you, you know what? It's something about when you can say Hosanna and realize, and I think a lot of us right now need to practice that as we stand and we go through things and the society's going through, just say Hosanna. God got this. I mean, are you fearful? Well, when fear come, I got to cast it down because anything that exalts itself above the knowledge of God, I got to start casting it down. Amen? But let's go back to St. John. I want to talk to you this, chapter 7, and here's what it says in verse 37, something I want to want to talk to you about. I got a revelation yesterday. Me and the wife were sitting down watching a movie, and I ain't going to tell you what the movie is, but it was a good movie. Uh, but it, I, it was a scene on the movie that really shook my faith. Amen, because it was a situation in the clip where the person had to walk out into a situation where there was nowhere to walk. Uh, you know, and the Bible says, now faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. So he, he had to walk out into a, <laughs> a ravine and had nothing there, but uh, he, he had a special gift that he could uh, do certain things to make stuff happen, but he had to first believe in his gift. Uh, so it is with us as Christians. We need to learn how to believe in our gift, believe in the faith that God has given you. Let's look at verse 37 where it says, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood crying, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Let him come unto me and drink. Now understand, he said, if any man thirst. Now, a lot of times in our lives, when we hear the word thirst, we think about water, Gatorade, or something to quench your thirst. But in this area, he's not talking about your natural thirst. Right now, those of you who are watching and those of us in this room, we, we're thirsty. We're thirsty for the power of God to flow. We're thirsty to stay in the realm of getting the outpouring of what God has for us. And because you must understand that 
the things that we need now are not from the natural sense. We, we need to have the power of God to strengthen us because so much is going on. Everybody says so much. <laughs> Amen. Here's what he said in verse 38. He said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. Right. Now, that, that's, very, that's a pivotal point. He that believeth on me as the scripture has said. Not what your denomination said. Not what your mama taught you, daddy taught you, but as the scripture has said. Because not even what your preacher preached to you. Can I, can I just get in your business? Because if you're just living off what I preach, you're already in trouble. Y'all didn't catch that. You got to go and spend some 2 Timothy 2.15 time. Study and show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You got to get in this word to understand your thirst is being met. He said, if you believe on me, and the word believe is, I want to work on that. And I got a, a teacher here, Pastor Cleckley, who knows how to break down those definitions. But the word believe it, help me out, Pastor Cleckley, you can holler out loud over there. We're over six feet. I think we're 12, 13 feet, something like that. Yeah, yeah, you far enough, I don't smell your breath. Amen. So, but the word believe it means a continual belief. It means it's ongoing. So he says, he that believeth on me, not just when you're in the church building, not just when you're in the choir, not just when you're around other saints, but he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. Amen? You know, we all miss giving those Holy Ghost hugs and the daps and, and, and smiling at each other and shaking hands. But here's what you got to depend on. He that believeth on me. As the scripture has said, he says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, what's awesome about that is that when you understand what Jesus is saying, he's letting you know that, look here, you got to get to the point that you believe for real. I better say, believe for real. Now, in that same book, go to chapter 4. See, and, and then when you go to chapter 4 in the same book, verse 14, I want to show you something. I think I'm going a little bit further on this one, though, because this is where some of us are. Because first of all, everybody that's listening to my voice, you can be saved. You can give your life to the Lord. Stop making it hard. Amen? You can give your life to the Lord. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. That's verse 7. Jesus said unto her, give me the drink. For his disciples were going away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria, and it's very important you understand what the word Samaria means, unclean, not accepted, out of the norm. I shouldn't be around you. Let me help you out. Samaria means racist. Racism was spoken on this woman because she came from a mixed breed. Then said the woman of Samaria, under, how is it thou, thou being a Jew, here we go, asking me, which I am a one of Samaria for the Jews to have no dealings with the Samaritans. In other words, y'all ain't supposed to be dealing with me. As a matter of fact, I'm just, I'm just adding this to it. This well you at is for Samaritans, it ain't for Jews. You know, back in the old days, the 40s, 50s, they had special place of black color coat drink here and the whites had drink there. Jim Crow law, yeah, Jim Crow law. They don't realize when they flushed it, the water went to the same, it'll be anyway. But he said, have no dealing with the Samaritan. Watch this, verse 10. Jesus answered, said to her, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, give me the drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee what? Living water. In other words, the water you getting up, the water you filling your bucket with, it ain't big enough to hold the water God's going to give you. Watch this. He said, the woman said unto him, Sir, 
thou has nothing to draw with. Now, this part you got to pay attention with. You don't have a bucket, and the well is deep. So you can't reach your hand in there to get a drink. The well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Here's what Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water will thirst again. Now, Christian, let me tell you something. You so used to drinking the same water, you ain't ready for the new water. Because the true test of who you are in Christ is right now. Amen? Now, I miss the fellowship of the saints. I miss us all being in the church. I miss us all throwing our hands up. But you also have to adapt and overcome. Now, we learned that in the military. And Bishop Perry Ford, if you're if you watching this out of California, you know that's what y'all say in the Marine Corps, simplify. Got to adapt and overcome. You got to learn how to adjust. In other words, the power of God hasn't left you. Your skills haven't left you. But because you're supposed to do it this way, I'm going to have to adapt to do it a different way. Amen? For years, Christians across the country have preached against social media. Not realizing that one day the very thing you preach against was the thing that was going to have to meet your thirst. Because divinely when God does something, he does not just do it for the world to enjoy. He does it to elevate his kingdom. And until we learn how to adapt and overcome, we're useless. That's why he said you got to believe on me. Watch this. I like this part here. Jesus said, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Watch this. Shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up with everlasting life, into everlasting life. In other words, Jesus said, I'm going to give you some water that you ain't got to dig for. It's already in you. See this, see this scripture here, Pastor K, is why I got that vision a long time ago when I said I feel it in my belly, but I ain't talking about a birth. There's something on the inside of us that we got to connect to because we're in a time now that we got to believe on him. You got to believe on him. But it's hard, Bishop. You just don't know. Let me tell you something. We all struggling with our belief. The man who had a son that had a demon, and he said, if you believe I can do it, he said, oh, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Get me to the point that I can get deep in this well that you've already put in me and pull up something to meet my thirst. You know, we walk around with our little cliches. I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm motivated about Jesus. Oh, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Now we're trying to find out if you really believe that. Talk is cheap. You don't need to write a check that your butt can't cash. You got to get in this words. You got to understand that Jesus said, if you believe on me. I'm about ready to shout, but I got to keep it down because I've been jumped over this thing. These wheels been took over there. The woman said unto him, sir, give me this water that I thirst not and neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, go and call thy husband and come hither. Now, here, here's what a rubber meeting the road. He said, now go call your husband and then come here. The woman asked and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, thou hast well said, I have no husband. No, you, you being truthful. So let's get an understanding here. Watch this. If you're going to believe on him, be truthful with yourself. You can fool some of the people all the time, but you can't fool God no time. Be truthful with yourself. Be truthful with what you need to change. Be truthful where you are. And here's the thing. And this is pretty hard for some people. Be truthful that, of where you are and that if you want to stay there, just say, I'm going to stay there. But God, I believe in you. Oh, that's tight right there.
Watch this. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast said, Well, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom now has is not thy husband. In the saddest thou truly. So in other words, you spoke the truth. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Now, it took the exposure to, <laughs> to let her know. Now, get ready to close a little bit. I said a little bit, because I, I, what I mean by res- a little bit, because I want what I'm preaching to you right now to resonate. We might close on this side, but I don't want you to stay open on that side. Going back to St. John chapter 7, he says, verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of your belly, out of your belly, shall flow rivers of living water. Now, just so that I know what to put on Facebook and for you to put on your notes, my topic is believe with every step. In other words, don't just believe when you're in the church. Don't believe, just believe when things are going good. You got to believe with every step. Every, I, I said earlier about adapting and overcome. You got to believe with every change, every change that's coming. Because I've told you publicly, this ain't going to go away quick. So you got to believe with every step. I, if you listen to the news, you're getting depressed, turn the news off. Amen? Find you some worship music. Find you some jazz. Find you something that's going to relax you and get you in the mindset where you can enjoy your life. Because what goes in your ear affects your inner. <clears throat> I can preach to you all day about hope. But if you don't have the power from the well within to speak over your own life, hope won't do you no good. Because when we speak what the Bible says, when we speak what we, what we believe, the molecules of the atmosphere have to line up with what's in you. That's why it says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. There's not nothing we're going through we won't overcome. There's not nothing personally you're going through. We pray for the families who have lost loved ones. We pray for the workers, the emergency crews, the hospitals. The power of the Holy Ghost. We ask that the Lord use his grace power and healing power on the people. But you got to believe with every step. The Bible says the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. There's not nothing we're going through that we're not going to overcome. Jesus is the answer for the world today. To me, there is no other. Jesus is the way. If you're not saved right now, I challenge you to accept Jesus Christ. And let me, let me just go a little deeper. Even if you profess you're saved, I challenge you to go a little deeper. I challenge you to repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I repent for every sin. Knowingly and unknowingly. And Lord, I do believe that you were born of a Virgin Mary, crucified and buried, and rose on the third day with all power. And Lord, I believe that before you ascended to heaven, you sent the power of the Holy Ghost to bring us comfort. And now, Lord, I repent for anything I've done. And I ask that you empower me and give me a better understanding of the water that's on the inside of me. So that I personally can say, I feel it in my belly and I ain't talking about a bird. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord Jesus, we thank you right now. We thank you for this social media that's been developed for you to use for the kingdom. And we pray for every pastor out there Lord, give them strength. Give their ministry strength as they stand under your banner of faith. 
And Lord, we pray for those pastors who want to go against what the law saw, says. Lord, help them use wisdom that we must obey the law of the land. Lord, we declare and decree it right now. Touch our government officials everywhere. In Jesus' name, we pray. I'm going to ask as we close out that evangelist, you can give. You can look on your screen and you can give your tithes and offering. I'm going to ask that evangelist Ladrella come up here and bless us with that song. Hallelujah. Give God some praise for it. Hallelujah, you have won the victory. Say that verse again. Oh, hallelujah, you have won. To him. Death could not hold you down. Come on, lift your hands in worship. You are the risen King. You're seated in majesty. She sings this. We have the communion set up here. And those who are at home, you may participate. Those who are watching didn't expect this. Run to the kitchen, get you some juice or something. Bring the whole loaf of bread out for breaking.
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup, saying, This cup is the cup of my new covenant in my blood. This do as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when ye come to eat together, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment, and the rest... Well, I set in order when I come. We pray blessings over you. We thank you for all you've done. And as we leave here, we're going to sing Hosanna. Hosanna. Come on. Blessed be the rock. Come on. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Of yes, sir. Blessed of my salvation. Oh, magnify. Oh, man, oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Hosanna. Yes, sir. Oh, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. 